evening everyone. Uh, tonight I'm gonna tie a small shrimp fly. Um, this is gonna be a pretty cool looking shrimp. It's it's gonna be a, a shrimp using one of these uh, pro shrimp shells that looks very very good both in the water and uh, <laughs> in your fly box. Um, it's not a very very difficult fly, but it's uh, it's uh, it's it's one that that definitely has worked for me on on numerous occasions. Well, ma mainly for for Danish sea trout. First of all, when you're tying a shrimp uh, like this with the uh, with a shell, you need to uh, you need to add some weight to the fly. Uh, but it's very important that you uh, that you use this weighting uh, kind of like a keel. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm tying my uh, my lead wire, my non lead wire in this case, because that's <laughs> the only thing that's allowed in Denmark. So I'm tying that down underneath. So it's going to be like a keel to uh, to ensure that uh, this fly is going to move correctly in the water. I've just taken uh, four strands of, of non lead wire and just you know, banded it up like that and then tied it down underneath the hook. Like so. Then I'm making a uh, a foundation of, of tying thread for for my next material to make sure that I have uh, what I need. And what we're gonna need for this fly is we're gonna need some 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 Arctic fox in white, um, some uh, some supreme hair also in white, some glistened up in uh, in pearl, some uh, STF dubbing, and uh, of course the pro shells. Um, Batcher hackle feather from just a Chinese neck or something like that. The pro shells and then uh, some 0 0.25 diameter or something like that. Just uh, regular nylon for uh, for ribbing. Okay, so I'm taking uh, a bundle of this uh, Arctic fox tail. This is a very very nice material for uh, for uh, shrimp patterns in general because it has. Uh, it has two different types of hairs in it. As you can see here, there are these uh, these very long, uh, very very uh, soft uh, tips, and then there is all this woolly part here, further behind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and strip some of this furry stuff out of here, and also I'm going to take some of the tips and just well, to make this uh, this is going to be the tail of the fly of the shrimp here to make this more uniform. Like so I'm gonna tie that on here right down here. Like so. Not a very big bundle. And then I'm gonna take some of this uh, supreme hair, which is well <laughs> Which is very good. I almost said supreme for uh, for antennas and stuff like that on shrimps. It's also very nice for bait fish patterns and stuff like that. So you can uh, you can use that material for for numerous amount amounts of things. I've just taken a few of these to uh, to imitate antennas. Tying this also here on top of the fly. This is a bit too long, so what I'm doing is I'm just pulling it. Into the to what I would like it to be in, in length, spreading it out a bit, like so. And then I'm gonna take a second bundle of uh, of uh, Arctic fox. Just gonna find the right bundle. This one looks good. Cutting that off as well. Again, I'm gonna strip out all the uh, the I don't know what it's called under wool or all the woolly part of this, um, and then I'm gonna tie this down so it's gonna be a bit longer than the first bundle. So my supreme hair is gonna be in the middle, in between two layers. Then you have a nice looking tail for your fly with all the antennas and stuff like that. Okay, so far so good. The hook I'm using here is a size 6, which fits great for the uh, extra small uh, shrimp shells. 
they are rather big these shrimp shells uh, at least in the size so so uh, extra small is, uh, is size 6 and the small is well, the 4 and the 2 and uh, if you want to tie a size uh, 8 or 10 you need to go for the extra extra small um, the reason I'm tying all the way up here is because I want this uh, body to have some volume so I'm not cutting him anything off until I get all the way up here like so so now I have a nice and tidy looking fly here with my antennas and my nice hair sticking out of it well for the next part of the fly I'm gonna use uh, uh, some rubber legs I'm only gonna do two rubber legs on this fly but uh, it's gonna look uh, it's gonna look awesome and also add some life to the fly so what I'm gonna do is I take one of these uh, uh, round rubber legs. The round rubber legs are, in my opinion, the the greatest rubber legs ever made because they are very, very, very strong lived, very, very long lived, and they don't uh, they don't rot in your fly box um, and they don't uh, wither in uh, in sunlight. So they are truly, truly amazing. Tying down two of these, one on each side. You could use the uh, easy shrimp legs for this as well. Uh, that would be uh, great on uh, on this on this pattern also. But uh, just for uh, for convenience, I'm just I'm not doing that today. So tying down these two all the way back like so. I'm not going to pay too much attention on as to where these <laughs> these are in what direction these are pointing. It's not something that's very important. Of course, you can use spend some time doing that, but it's not the most important thing about this fly. Well, so next step is uh, is tying down my ribbing. This is just 0 0.22 uh, millimeters in diameter. Just some monofilament. Tying this down here on the side that's pointing away from you. I'm sorry for that. And next up is uh, our hackle. What we need is uh, is uh, is one of the larger hackles from uh, from this uh, uh, this batcher uh, batcher Chinese rooster neck. A very nice uh, color for for many uh, many many sea, sea trout flies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this hackle. As you can see, I've taken off half of this hackle and, I, and when I'm holding it like this holding it like this I'm taking out the part that is pointing towards me uh, this is important because when I turn this I want it to turn right uh, the right way uh, so I want my hackle fibers to to point backwards towards me and uh, the, the way I can do that is if I tie this down correctly I almost made a mistake, as you can see. If I started turning this, then the fiber, the curve of the fiber would be uh, forwards, which is not the intent of this. So I have to turn this over and tie it down like this. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can never be certain about these feathers. They have, they tend to have a, a mind of their own and just you know, do go in every which direction. Luckily, uh, you can just uh, you can just if 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 they have will of their own, you can, and I'll show you later if that happens. You can just force them uh, backwards. Well, so I've tied everything uh, down where I wanted, and I'm gonna make a small dubbing loop right about there, hanging that off to the side, taking my third all the way up here, and then I'm gonna take some. STF in the color sand, very nice color, and then I'm gonna take some of this glisten dub, which is a very very uh, this is actually a, f a flesh dubbing. Taking some of that, and then mixing the two, just pulling them apart and laying them on top of one another, turning it over in my hands like this, just making these two dubbings come together and create a, well, create magic, I hope. Good, so far so good. Taking my dubbing loop, applying some of this uh, newly mixed dubbing here. And what I need is I need this fly to be thicker in, uh, 
in uh, in the end part and then gradually uh, taper uh, down to uh, to uh, to a, a less thick uh, front because that is how the shrimp uh, looks in the water yeah in your in the palm of your hand also that's just how shrimp looks so taking all this material adding it to the uh, dubbing loop taking my dubbing reel spinning it I think I have enough materials here maybe I have a bit too much dubbing but well better safe than sorry I'm gonna pull a little of this out here like so And one of the things I really enjoy about this, uh, the Vivus thread that I'm using, I'm using a Vivus thread, thread is uh, that it's it's so sturdy, it's so very, very, very strong, which is uh, great for, for dubbing loops and, well, great for everything. And also, it's it's incredibly strong compared to its, uh, its thin diameter. What I'm using here is 0.14, which is, <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm sure you would agree with me, a very, very thin uh, tying thread. But um, this point 14 has no problem whatsoever tying uh, rather big flies and also have the, the breaking strength above something like... Uh, something like... Uh, 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 0.8 from, uh, from uh, Unithread, something like that. So, next up... I'm gonna take my hackle here, and then I'm gonna try to see if I can... Ah, this just won't work for me. No matter how I do it, this always sucks a bit. Well, I'm just gonna turn it then, see how it all comes out. As I'm turning it, I am... Um, I'm applying some... Uh, some pressure, pressure and some sideways movements because uh, that will make uh, my hackle kind of move in between the uh, the dubbing which is uh, is going to be nice um, to, to make sure that it's secured f greatly tying it down all the way up here at the front of the fly cutting off what I don't need and then I'm taking one of these uh, shrimp shells. Uh, this one is, is is the white one with uh, with dots on it, <laughs> a nice color. Um, and uh, how I'm using this is I'm tying this down all the way up here. Like so. So you have these two fins all the way up there. Spread nice. And evenly out. Just pull that there. Then I'm gonna take my dubbing teaser and just making sure everything is where I want it to be pointing downwards. So it's not it's gonna be in the way of my uh, of my uh, my shell like so. Taking the shell backwards, and to this I apply a lot of pressure to make sure that this is exactly where I want it to be. Then I'm turning my ribbing, and uh, while I turn the rib, I apply a lot of pressure to make sure that everything stays in place, like that. Tying down the, uh, the ribbing, making sure that's where I want it to be, and just to be a hundred percent on this on this safe side, I turned it over up here so so actually it's tied it down doubly cut that away 
making my wood finish. Oops. Cut that off. Applying some varnish to make sure everything is nice and nice and tidy. And then I'm going to turn this upside down just to brush out the dubbing, make sure everything is is how I want it. Making sure this fly has this aura effect, gets gets transparent and uh, and looks more like the real thing. This fly has been great. Or flies very similar to this one has been very great on uh, on the Danish coastline for uh, for a sea trout. But I'm pretty sure that this uh, this type of fly with this shrimp shrimp shell here can uh, can <laughs> well outsmart almost any species. I think this would probably be good for bonefish as well. Maybe even on well on a on a thicker hook for something like permit and stuff like that. If you have any experience with the with the port shells on uh, on species like that, I would very very much like to hear hear about it. Well, there you have it. Uh, port shrimp uh, with uh, a lot of not very. Inex inexpensive materials, probably stuff you already have, but if you don't, you can just uh, click right here up at the corner and, uh, and see uh, where you can get it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, that was all for now. Thank you for listening.